We are inside CES, which is the biggest consumer electronics show of the year. This year's CES in Las Vegas, a new AI hardware product was unveiled by a company that believes is the best supplementary device to go along with your smartphone, instead of replacing it. The presentation was interesting, and the claims are incredible. There was no previous hype around this product, and it sent shockwaves throughout the entire industry. It is called the Rabbit R1. What is it all about? And why is it all of a sudden the talk throughout the industry? Let's find out. Before we begin, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as we strive to bring the latest and greatest from the world of AI. With that said, let's get straight to business. To begin, at the CES event this year held on the 9th of January in Las Vegas, the R1, a collaborative creation of the US startup Rabbit and tech company Teenage Engineering was unveiled. This palm-sized vibrant orange AI assistant is positioned as a pocket companion with the goal of challenging the prevailing dominance of smartphones in our daily lives. Now, what is this selling proposition all about? The CEO of the company, the moment he took the stage, talked about how our smartphones are not smart anymore. He emphasized that it takes a lot of clicks and switching between the apps to get different tasks done. We are quite used to it, but the AI assistant built into our smartphones are not good enough. He mentioned Siri, Alexa, and Cortana, and how they lacked in different domains, ranging from getting the input right and then getting the output right. Jesse Liu, the CEO, said that the company aims to create the simplest possible computer with a delightful user experience without any learning curve. His solution was to eliminate the necessity of using app-based mobile operating systems for basic tasks. While you can still keep your smartphone if you do more with that than what this small handheld can accomplish, he then emphasized what his company is trying to do. At its core, they are trying to help their users get more of their tasks done via NLP. The prospect sounds great, but there are many vague descriptions on what this device can do. They claim that this device could plan full-fledged vacations, tell you food recipes, and if the user enjoys the food, he or she can ask it to order its ingredients from the market. The CEO also talked about the ecosystem on how first an app can be installed on a user's mobile phone, and then it starts learning your usage behaviors so it can mimic the same with the smaller handheld. To add to the list, the Rabbit R1 allows users to perform various actions, such as booking flights, streaming music, or editing Photoshop images. To interact with the R1, users simply press and hold a button on the right-hand side of the device, engaging in conversation with their AI assistant as if using a walkie-talkie. Commands are issued in natural language, and users can access a simplified visual interface that represents their assistant through pixel art-styled bunny imagery. Thankfully, it does have a screen because we believe we are still quite far from the screenless future. The R1 houses Rabbit's customized AI, categorized as a large action model or LAM, making a progression from the well-known large language models found in chatbots like ChatGPT. While LLMs primarily generate text responses to human input, Rabbit's AI goes a step further, creating actions on behalf of users such as online grocery shopping, taxi, or ticket bookings as explained by Liu. The argument which the company is presenting though will take a lot of convincing especially considering how glued to our phones we've become. A survey from Reviews.org found that 89% of Americans check their phone within the first 10 minutes of waking up, and 60% sleep with their phone at night. Although personal AI agents of this nature have gained significant attention online, Rabbit asserts that their operating system is the first to incorporate a LAM, which, to be honest, is a statement of either self-praise or lack of industrial knowledge. As we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of vagueness throughout the demonstration, which makes us feel a little bit jittery about the final product. This is because it is not a concept, it's a product that you can pre-order right now and get your hands on it in March. Shifting our focus back to LAM, its core functionality involves initially grasping users' intentions and behaviors within specific apps, then replicating those actions. While Rabbit OS offers a completely new experience, it's built on the solid foundation of the Linux kernel, ensuring stability and compatibility. This OS is also contextually aware, which means that LAM can understand the context of your requests and respond accordingly. For example, if you ask, what's the weather like? It will provide the weather forecast for your current location. For this, obviously, custom APIs for individual apps are unnecessary, as the model is universal and adaptable across various mobile and desktop environments. Upon launch, Rabbit assures that the R1 will already be adept at working with popular apps, with ongoing plans to introduce additional functionalities. The training feature for specialized apps will also be available in the future. 
For the product's physical and industrial design, Rabbit collaborated with Teenage Engineering, recognized for its innovative approach to music gadgets such as synthesizers and speakers, to craft a distinctive appearance infused with a sense of nostalgia. Inspired by the Tamagotchi, a Japanese digital toy pet, the company sought to create a device that is not only visually stunning, but also seamlessly functional. In addition to featuring a 2.88-inch touchscreen display and a touch-to-talk button, the physical elements include a scroll wheel for navigating the display and the Rabbit Eye, a rotating camera designed for computer vision. This camera allows users to perform tasks such as looking in the fridge and identifying ingredients to suggest recipes. In the form of an avatar, the operating system manifests as a bunny head on the display, engaging in animated jumps during information processing and bobbing along with headphones during music playback. According to Rabbit, several design decisions offer security advantages. For instance, the touch-to-talk button circumvents the always-listening mode found in smart speakers, a feature Lou described as outdated in his keynote. Similar to that, the eye's ability to rotate ensures that the camera lens remains physically obstructed until the user initiates a request, eliminating another potential surveillance route. Rabbit assures a robust level of encryption and guarantees user continuous awareness and control over the actions performed by the agents. The device refrains from storing user credentials for third-party devices. The processing needed on the device is remotely done on a data center, and for users to get their hands on this product, they will have to pay $199 USD and £159 for the UK market. They claim that the device is minimal and consumes only a small amount of power, but since it adds to the demand on data centers, which require huge amounts of water and electricity, the promise of power efficiency also finds itself hanging in vagueness. Before we get into the final thoughts, let us shower some more light on the company Rabbit and how they got to CES. Founded in 2021 by a group of passionate engineers and entrepreneurs, Rabbit's core mission was to create technology that seamlessly integrated into people's lives, making them more efficient and productive. Their initial focus was on developing a voice-activated assistant that could connect to and control smart home devices. To bring their vision to life, Rabbit secured $20 million in seed funding in early 2022. This investment, led by prominent venture capital firms Sequoia Capital and Anderson Horowitz, allowed them to build a talented team, refine their technology, and start production of the R1. Rabbit was invited to showcase their product at CES 2024, one of the world's largest consumer electronic shows. The R1 proved to be a crowd pleaser, receiving rave reviews from journalists and attendees alike. It was more of a shock to the industry because no one had ever heard about them. They just popped out of nowhere. And now they find themselves in competition with big companies like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Is it positioned correctly? After our research, what we believe is that it's too early to give the final verdict about this product, especially when there are no numbers, no specifications, and no performance comparisons. It would be safe to say that this product is promising, and it kind of falls into the accessories category, which itself is a booming market. Now, upon checking remarks from different experts, they thought that even if they believe all what is being promised in the demonstration is correct, the product should have been designed more like a wearable. Some even say that it is, while others simply say it's not because unlike watches or bands, the R1 isn't worn on the user's wrist or elsewhere. Users are meant to hold it in their hand or carry it in their pocket. Secondly, while R1 might monitor some basic health data like steps taken, it doesn't offer the comprehensive health trackers and fitness features found in many wearables. So, the problem being highlighted over here is product positioning. Are they entering the right market? Are the consumers actively demanding such a product? These two questions will get answered in two months' time. As of now, the bottom line is that the promise is big, but the demonstration was a bit weak and vague. This is a clear lack of evidence, and there are many things like planning a full-fledged vacation with a voice command that sound too good to be true. With that, we conclude today's video. Subscribe to AI Symbiosis because we bring the latest and greatest updates from the world of AI. We have made another video on the robots Tesla is making. They are called Tesla Optimus. To find out what the company has achieved so far, click on the video link popping up.